had one coming in the decoys when the cartridge back. What in our brain tells us to lift our barrels to one bird and to let the next one fly by? There must be some sort of subconscious range limit mechanism that whispers, you've got no chance, mate. Well, we've decided to gauge the range finding accuracy of a couple of unwilling volunteers. 65. Right. Yeah, I, was, yeah. I was saying about 70. So. Lupton and Crow, or to avoid a lawsuit, Lupton and Crow. How far was it? What? I don't know now, it's gone. Oh, not bad, yeah. We find them having a range off where Andy is hoping to shoot some birds with his 12 gauge Betton Solly as Roy gauges the range with his Zeiss rangefinders. The whole reason for coming out today is not to embarrass myself trying to uh, shoot pigeons, but what we're going to do is we're going to be watching Andy shoot. And I think there's a, a lot of misunderstanding and um, discrepancies in people's estimation of range, especially when they're shooting birds. Um, whether it be driven pheasants or whether it be pigeons. So what we're going to do today is try and get a bit of a feel for when we're pigeon shooting, just what sort of ranges we're dealing with and really what sort of ranges we can shoot pigeons effectively and humanely at. So, you know, I think that's really what we want to try and get out of today. Of course, Andy has shot these fields for years and has paced out a number of landmarks to create a mental range arc out to where he feels comfortable taking a shot. This bird dropping into Gatwick is 1,157 metres above us. As a warm-up, Roy tests Crow on his pattern. How far out would you say you are there? At 29, 30? Yeah, 31. So that's the extended right-hand range of your pattern. Yeah. And then we've got to the extreme left. Just double check that, that's 30 as well. So yeah, we've got a nice arc of 30 yards on the pattern. I'll tell you what, you're not bad at this game. You're 30 yards on your furthest um, flapper there, and you're 30 yards on your furthest decoy on that side. About right. Yeah. About where you want to be. Now time for some shooting. The readout yeah! from the binos well, is fast enough to get a few results. <laughs> Crow him, has been pretty accurate and there have only been a few that have caught him out. It's about 45 yards, I suspect. And even then he says it was a small bird, so it looked further away than it was. What range was that, would you say? I said it was about 55 yards. Sorry? About 55. 38. Was it that old? Yeah. I would have thought that was further. Yeah, I would. That's quite interesting, that. Yeah. So we just had one then that Andy shot and looking at it, I would have said it was, you know, further than it was. We've got the range, we've got the range on that one exactly as Andy shot and it was 38. Furthest pigeon I've ever shot. How big six inches? <laughs> Where do you reckon you are now? 55? Yeah, 54 on that one is the drop. So the one that was shot at 38, that dropped at 45. 48. What do you reckon? 48. 46. So yeah, you're about there on that one. So everything's everything's there has dropped. So the furthest was 48 with the drop. Um, so again, you know, that's what you want, and that's the whole reason that Andy does his patterns the way he does, with a you know a 30-yard pattern from the hide, and then everything's hopefully within a, a good killing range. To end our morning, and much to Crow's annoyance, he hates anything getting between him and a pigeon. We bring out the Firebirds for another distance test. Just how far will his game bore shells travel with a quarter choke? Right, David has got a perspex sheet out and set up some firebird targets out there and we're going to shoot it and we're going to start off at 60 yards, walk back and just see how effectively a shotgun pattern will break those at that. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be effective at producing a humane kill on a pigeon um, because we're not doing anything to test on the penetration and the damage that, the, that it's doing but literally just to see how effective the pattern is at hitting something at that range. That was effective. <laughs> the first attempt is at 60 yards. He aims straight at it and they explode with no problem. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move back to 80, have another go and uh, we'll just see exactly what that does. If he gets them on that one then we'll try and push it a little bit further. Now 80 yards. This time the firebirds explode with his second shot. Got about three inches on the top of it. First one I aimed straight at it and then the second shot I was about three, oh, was just three inches on the top of it. So at 80 yards we're getting a slight pellet drop but there's still enough punch to set the birds off. 
but it's at 100 that things get tricky. 20 shots at the target oh, and nothing doing. The exact design set up as most people would do their day's pigeon shooting. Um, and we've now had 20 shots, easily 20 shots at the target. Um, and we've, we've just not been able to break the Firebirds. Now we're, all, we're seeing shot string hit into the uh, horizon line in front of us here. Um, and there's definitely shots, shot getting out there, but it's not having an effect. So, you know, the, uh, the actual killing range of the, the, uh, the cartridges and the setup that we're using is definitely not effective for, uh, for that range. Effective range is the first thing you assess before lifting those barrels, but a bird's flight path can be deceptive, especially when it's just got sky behind it. However, by pacing out your pattern, using tree positions and knowing the limits of your shells, you'll have a much better idea whether or not that bird is living dangerously. And what do you reckon that is? 